One of the ways in which experienced chefs excel is by finding ways to include layers of flavors. These preparations often require patience and more time than the average home cook would invest because home cooks are usually focused on making a single meal that isn't going to be repeated anytime soon, while a restaurant chef can justify spending a great deal of time on a preparation that's going to improve the flavor of a menu item that's served hundreds of times every week. So many of these methods aren't viable for home cooking, and that's why you pay money to eat out in great restaurants. However, there are some of these techniques that have broader application that you can utilize at home. Savory crumbles, such as this, are probably something you've never even thought about before. I've got the ingredients assembled here. Back at the back, I've got 60 grams of butter, uh, the celery, red bell pepper, and onion. I'm going to give these a whiz in the food processor in uh, a few minutes and grind these, uh, grind the, the vegetables fine. Uh, I've got the spices, which uh, is the uh, dried red chili pepper, the coarse salt, two bay leaves, white peppercorns, and thyme. And this is going to get ground up in the spice mill, made into a powder. The passata, and I've got flour. Now I'm using about one-third amaranth and uh, two-thirds hard red winter wheat is really what you want to use for this if you can possibly get it. If not, you can use regular old all-purpose flour. Ideally, you want hard red winter wheat and amaranth flour and I'll explain why in volume three, but um, if you can't get it, it's okay. You can use all whole wheat flour for the whole thing. It'll still be okay. I'm recommending that you use Guinness ale for this. I'm actually using a Russian beer that's aged in oak. This is really delicious, but there's zero chance you're going to get it. It's hard to get even in Russia. And uh, so we'll begin heating the pan, melting the butter, processing the vegetables. As soon as the butter has melted, I'm going to add the amaranth to it. Temperature here is uh, about five, about medium on one to ten. I cook the amaranth a little bit first. Um, I am using hard red winter wheat for this, and if you're in Russia and you don't think you can get it, well, guess again, it does exist. It's just hard to find. It will work a lot better than regular all-purpose flour, but. Um, Again, I, I know that a lot of people don't have the ability to go out and find these things, so this is the, the hard red winter wheat flour. And we're going to stir this around for about yeah, three or four minutes, like we're making a roux basically. Hey, you can chop these vegetables up by, by hand if you want to. In, usually that's an advantage. In this case, this is one of the rare cases where this will work just fine. Now, in about three, four minutes, you've got uh, a dark brown roux um, over medium heat. Amaranth and hard red winter wheat will create a dark roux much faster than, than regular wheat. So now I'm going to add the vegetables from the food processor. I'm going to cook it for several minutes like this. You see it, it um, cooks up like, like almost like it's uh, bread, like it's wet bread right now. We're going to get it past this stage. Get it a lot of this moisture out. Still got the heat on uh, between about four and five, so low to medium, mm, closer to medium. It has been about six minutes now. You can see a lot of the moisture is gone and it's darkened. Now I'm going to add that beer, uh, ale. This is 180. Uh, milliliters. The heat is still the same and I'm going to cook this down until it's dry again. Same heat though. Just be patient. Now I have the thyme, the salt, the white peppercorns, uh, the spices in here. I'm going to add the uh, dried red pepper. Not the, not the stem, leave the stem out.
that's going to be our spice mix. After 10 to 12 minutes, it looks like this again. You've got sticky, gloopy kind of thing that's dried out. Now I'm going to add the spices from the, the spice mill and cook this with this for just a minute or so before we add the passata. Just about a minute, just to incorporate it. Get these nicely integrated here. Okay, it's actually been about two minutes. I'm going to add the passata. Stir this to combine. Still got the heat on uh, about just under five on a one to ten. So it's just a shy side of medium. And we're going to cook this down for a little while here. <laughs> Quite a little while. This needs stirring every three or four minutes. If you wait more than about five minutes, it will stick to the bottom of the pan and begin burning. This is not the time to leave the kitchen, wander off, talk on the phone, anything else. This is one of those times where you're actually going to have to stand by the stove and pay some attention. After about 15 minutes, you'll notice it starts to stick to the bottom no matter what you do. Now I'm going to lower the heat to about 3 out of 1 to 5. I'm still going to cook it, but we're going to try to keep it from sticking by reducing the heat. And scrape the bottom. Don't let it stick and burn. Now it's been nearly 20 minutes. I'm going to add a couple of cloves of crushed garlic to this and two to three teaspoons of lemon zest, freshly grated lemon zest. I'm going to stir this in. Still the heat's on three now fairly low. We're going to cook this for another few minutes. It's like this. Stir it frequently. Don't let it stick and burn. It's been about 25 minutes now since the passata was added. Now I'm going to add the breadcrumbs and stir it around and we're on the, the final track here. Final last stage here. I'll let the breadcrumbs absorb all this. Okay, we're coming up on <coughs> about 35 minutes now since the uh, passata was added. It's still on heat three, and you can see it's, it's fairly dry and crumbly now. That's about done. I'm going to transfer it to a plate to cool off before we do the final grind. And spread it out on a plate like this. Let some of the moisture evaporate into the air before we uh, continue. After 15 or 20 minutes, of cooling, you load it back into the food processor, add the last portion of breadcrumbs and then either some salt or some MSG. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people are going to freak out over MSG. It's a good thing. <laughs> you can use salt. You can use half a teaspoon of salt if you prefer. And that's it. Now we bottle this up and put it in the refrigerator. Store it in the refrigerator. It'll last a long time. And uh, this is uh, this is going to be an amazing, amazing compound on top of many, many different dishes. We're going to use this in the future instead of breadcrumbs. You'll see. The second volume of my cookbook is now available through Amazon and other booksellers. It covers the YouTube recipes from the last eight months with more in-depth information. I received requests for the procedures on all recipes and I've listened to you. Every recipe has step-by-step -step directions and of course there are recipes that aren't on YouTube. But this is not just a recipe book. Far from it as you can see from some of the topics scrolling by here. I'm certain that anyone who watches my channel and any serious cook will find this book a treasury of useful and new information you won't find anywhere else.
If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.